Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound and this week we got another Monday market report, this time for the week ending May 2nd, 2021. Uh, kind of your Sunday night edition, uh, a little something for you guys to uh, watch on your commutes uh, tomorrow or whenever you watch this. Uh, but anyways, this is, uh, this is kind of a funny week. Um, as you guys know, we had just concluded a couple really big auctions. Uh, the first one being the, uh, the Le Legend Auctions Regency. Uh, another Regency had closed up here this past, uh, this past week, week and a half or so. Uh, in addition to the Heritage Auctions Central States Numismatic Show, which concluded just over about a week ago. Um, so generally, there's kind of like this two-week period or, or, you know, somewhere thereabouts uh, where we see kind of a, uh, a pullback of the higher quality um, listings and, and coins that you would normally see on sites like Great Collections. Uh, so they've definitely ratcheted back a little bit from putting uh, some of their more marquee kind of like higher echelon um, coins uh, for sale. Uh if and only if there is a overlapping like big show, uh, you know, like a Long Beach, a Central States, you know, you name it. Um, but so we have a little bit of a, uh, a quiet period this week. We still have 15 coins to talk about, okay, to kick off the good old May month. Uh, but I figure in the spirit of trying to find out where we could find some of these coins, you know, Maybe it helps if we kind of, you know, talk about a few of the coins on the list. There's probably a good half dozen or so that I would say would make for uh, for a pretty easy cherry pick. And if and only if, because you got to put into work just like anything else. Um, if and only if you have like local coin shops or if you have a, a lot of people that try to sell coins and and uh, if maybe you have a, 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 sh a local show or a regional show. Um, these are certainly coins that I would, uh, that I would go after, um, uh, mostly because of the very low inexpensive entry into buying that coin with the possibility that you can make a thousand bucks, 2000 bucks. I, I know it sounds very, um, uh, uh, very kind of like typical because, you know, you, you guys have heard this from a bunch of other YouTubers. Hey, Find this coin that's worth fifty cents and then turn it into three thousand dollars. I mean, it's easier said than said than done. But a lot of those type of coins, I mean, you really have to go through some major hurdles to even find some of those coins. All right, especially some of the uh, the, the newer, more modern pieces from like the seventies and the eighties and maybe the nineties. These coins are, are few and far between, and furthermore, you know, there is a lot of folks that tell you, go ahead and look through your change, go ahead and go through coin rolls to find these coins. But realistically, a lot of the coins where you have a much better shot of looking for some of those higher value coins can be really as close as your coin shop, okay? If we, if we think about a coin shop and what they sell, they sell type coins they sell bullion you know things like that okay they, they're not going to sit there and, and grade out uh, a 1950s washington quarter that looks really good um just so they think they could get you know that mid-state 68 or whatever the case may be um but maybe that might be left to someone else and usually coin shops will receive in a lot of like collections that people have brought in maybe a, a loved one had passed and they have this huge collection of coins that they want to bring in and usually that's some really great stuff some of these old whitman you know bookshelf albums with really pretty toned coins um you know it, it's it, it's like a, a home run all right when you see stuff like this um but usually the coin dealers they just like to you know take the individual coins out of the album Put them in two by two flip holders and then resell them that way. So we're gonna certainly identify and talk about a few coins that that I would certainly see it as how you know you never know that the market throughout the summer may may go back to what it was five years ago where actual hardcore collectors will kind of take a break. Um, we've seen just an incredible coin market the last twelve months. 
since the beginning of the pandemic. So where is this lull going to come from? It might just come from this summer. We'll see. But this will give, give you guys an opportunity to really hone in on your cherry picking skills. All right. So all the coins featured today are uh, modern post 1900. They're all from greatcollections.com. Um, the, between them and eBay, there are the only two uh, outlets where they're selling coins. But we're going to focus on uh, you know the best of the best for the 20th century featured on great collections. So let's go ahead and jump right in to the first coin. Um, there you go. Uh, we're going to start it off with a, a, a mega variety, if I've ever seen one. 1972, Lincoln Memorial Cent. This one is, of course, the Double Die Obverse FS101. I mean, just look at the obverse of the coin, and you'll know that it, this is the one that uh, everybody goes for. Now, the coin on its face is not particularly rare. Uh, these exist in pretty deep and wide quantities. Whether you cherry pick them, you know, right out of change. All right. Don't want to sound, you know, too much like everybody else. But um, these coins are continuously being found through coin rolls or people are looking through BU rolls. So there's a few different ways and options that you can, you know, kind of explore to find coins like this. In addition, there are a good other 10 or so relevant double die obverses. Uh, maybe like nine, eight or nine, aside from this one, that that are very important. And uh, some of them are valuable. Some of them are even more valuable than this FS-101. How about the FS-104, right? That's like a rare one right there. A coin that I've seen sell for as high as four to $5,000 in like Mint State 65. So that's another option. Uh, this one right here is, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it. This is an original green holder. It's CAC certified, Mint State 64 red, which it's a pretty good grade. Uh, and if you don't see the little pattern on the label, this is actually an older, what they call doily holder. So it's got kind of like a floral pattern um, watermark on the actual paper of this label. Um, but with all that said, this one sold for $1,014.75. And that's like nearly double what the market is for a mint state 64 red of this coin uh i think a lot of it has to do with the uh believe it or not the pcgs holder you know and that doily uh that doily label um all really come together uh to make this one sell for over a thousand dollars so that's worth noting all right so this next one right here uh I mean, no doubt about it, it's going to be a registry set coin, 1948 Lincoln Wheat Cent. This one grades out NGC, Mid-State 67 Plus, full red. Uh, apparently, it's the only way to get a 67 Plus is by submitting it to NGC. Uh, PCGS will probably end up grading this one as 67, and that will affect the, the actual value of the coin, uh, especially in the long run. Uh, this example sold for $2,812 and 50 cents now the two coins i talked about the 72 might be kind of like the exception to the rule uh, because those are coins that are constantly being searched and hunted and cherry picked on a weekly basis so that is that, that is a coin that people are going after and that that kind of reflects on the actual price of 1972 bu rolls all right but the 48 i would probably leave alone this is again not for someone uh, who's afraid to throw money <laughs> money away because uh, you could send out 25 of these and none of them will come back 67 plus. Okay, um, the graders get really finicky when when you know things begin to affect the top pop and of the, um, the the grading scale. So that's that's worth talking about. Now a coin obviously that's not going to be mistaken for being an easy cherry pick is going to be a 1914D. Lincoln Wheat Set. Now, this is a, a really, really exclusive coin. This is, of course, one of the key dates within this series. So that by itself, you know, there's not a whole lot else to really, you know, elaborate on. Um, it, 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 it just is what it is. This is going to be a tough coin to find raw. Most of the pieces that are worth its salt are graded. Okay, so this one is an NGC Mid-State 65 Brown. Um, looks every bit of it. Um, there's a few little pockets of mint red in, in the protected areas of the coin. 
Aside from that, it's a really, really nice, exceptional piece, um, you know, for a higher end set. Not necessarily a registry set. I've seen people dump a ton of money into coins like this, specifically for their own collection. All right. And then some people, I would say, would even invest in it. Um, the mintages are quite low for a 14D, uh, along with a few other earlier uh, Lincoln Wheat back coins uh, but this one right here is just a really nice example and uh, it sold for four thousand nine hundred sixty eight dollars now when you get into like the brown patina that's where things are semi affordable if this was a red brown it'd probably be worth eight to ten thousand uh, dollars so you know just the, the more red that exists onto a coin of this caliber will heighten its value um, uh, exponentially so it's pretty crazy how that happens. But this is an attractive coin for, you know, something that's oxidized but was well-preserved as a mid-state example. All right, so this is the first coin that I would say, you know, above all else would be a great cherry pick. Now, you guys saw probably the, the thumbnail that I included into this video. It's like, buy this coin for 10 bucks, and then confidently send it off to grading and then make you know, $2,000 plus. Um, there's a lot of different opportunities, okay? But a lot of people, a lot of people are so hung up with the strike designation on coins. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, for those of you that have been following channels like mine, like maybe Couch Collectibles and a few others, there's a whole bunch of them that talk about strike designation. You know, that's how well a coin is struck. Like on this particular instance, a Jefferson Nickel, is graded on two different criteria. They either graded with full steps, in which you have six clearly defined lines that make up the steps part of Monticello on the reverse of the coin, or non-full steps designation coins. Okay, and then non-full steps also includes a lot of those like lower condition examples, like a VF30, an AG3, a Poor One, things like that. So um, a lot of people this day you know these days because of just what's out there in the media understand that if you're going to make money on jefferson nichols you have to exclusively look for full steps well that's partially true and partially false um there are a lot of coins you know there are i would make the argument that there are a number of coins that are worth five figures or more in full steps but without it there is really not a whole lot if any um, so in this particular instance, this is a 1944S Silver War Nickel. Okay, so it's not just like any other Jefferson Nickel. This one is uh, rather unique based off of its composition. Now, they, the U.S. Mint did produce wartime sil silver nickels, which are 35% silver manganese composition, um, from 42 all the way up to 45. So you have a nice four-year kind of window of coins to collect. But this, much like the 1943 uh, Steel Penny that we all know and love, are kind of like rather unique coins based off of their different composition. And because of that, it kind of opens up the doors a whole lot wider for you to, say, cherry pick. Not necessarily on strike designation like full steps, but overall cleanliness of the coin. You know, and this is a coin that you see on screen is a great example of a coin that I have uh, found out of um, albums that I've bought, okay? My, actually, my highest graded Jefferson Nickel is a mid-state 68. Um, it's a 1945 S, uh, no, not S, D, wartime silver nickel, um, and it's worth over $1,000 by itself. But that was a coin that I identified, I cherry-picked, um, in my collection, I actually bought a few of these Whitman bookshelf uh, type albums. They're blue, they're older, they're from like the 50s. Um, you know, and I bought these, you know, for fair market value. Probably spent maybe a good maybe $100 because all the coins were mid-state. Um, but I identified this one coin because of its light toning and just overall clean appearance. Okay, this one, as you can tell. Um, is light on any sort of nicks and marks. I mean, it's a very nice coin. Uh, but again, it's very weak on the step department. So some would say, well, it's not worth sending in. I beg to differ. Uh, look at the just overall grade of this. Mid-State 68, and it's also QA-certed. It's like CAC, 
but this is more for the modern coins. Um, this one right here is also a Sunset 147 piece. Okay, so that's a uh, revolving provenance that they're selling. They got a whole bunch more of these coins from the Sunset collection that they're selling. And this one sold for $1,306.12. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, this coin has no full steps at all. I mean, it's rather weak. But if you look at the whole presentation of the coin with the light coloring, you know, the toning, along with just how clean they are, I mean, this one's a home run. So this is one of those coins that tr traditionally gets kind of overlooked and passed up at, at the coin dealer or coin show end of the spectrum. Uh, you know, they'll usually put this in a two by two and sell for five bucks. And it's a really good kind of opportunity for you to pounce. Um, let's see. The next coin, 1941S. Now, this one is not like the 44 that we saw because this one is indeed a full steps coin. Uh, 41S, not necessarily tougher. It is a little bit tougher to find a little bit more clean. Uh, these will generally have a little bit more planchet marks and nicks. Um, and, and more dye deterioration, as you can see. There's a little bit of weakness in Pluribus Unum up here. So, you know, that's one thing to contend with, but these coins look beautiful as well. This one, obviously, is a registry set coin. PCGS Mid-State 67 Full Steps. And this one sold for $1,644.75. And this one is, by the way, another Sunset Collection piece. And then we have another one here. Now, I, I will say this. Even though this one's a full stepper, allegedly, <laughs> and I use that term very loosely, um, some people aren't incredibly aware by the, the reverse of 38 and the reverse of 40, which are two different reverse types based off of what the steps look like. So the reverse of 38 will have kind of this crude, wavy steps. It's nothing to write home to mother about for sure. Uh, but the, the more, um, I, I guess, um, uh, cutting edge looking steps uh, occur from 1940 onward. So that is kind of like a transitional period. And uh, this one, by the way, is a 39D. So it's a semi key for the, uh, for the series. But it also has some, some nice toning. It's a mid-state 67 plus full steps, uh, QA asserted. But what I really wanted to say was... This was also another cherry picking opportunity, being able to identify the reverse of 38s on the 1939 and 1940 nickels, uh, because they're actually worth more with those wavy steps on the reverse. So keep that in mind. Uh, this one sold for $2,182.50. All right, that's a pretty nice coin right there. All right, so your next cherry picking opportunity, this is part two, all right, is going to be Buffalo Nickels of the 1930s. You've heard me say this before, but some people, um, you know, they, they're either way too focused on like the super modern stuff uh, or they just don't have access to resources that allow them to cherry pick coins like this. Now, in terms of Buffalo Nickels, you could easily find any mint state coin of the 1930s all right from 1930 to 1938 keep in mind 1938 d is a very very plentiful date in mid-state because a lot of them were hoarded people knew the new jefferson nickel design was going to be released so they hoarded all the 38d buffaloes and that's why there's so many of them in mid-state condition but a lot of these coins guys can be had for well under a hundred dollars now why did i use a hundred dollars and not say 40 bucks or whatever well a lot of your philadelphia and some of the denver struck examples in mid-state that you can cherry pick from a coin shop or show are available for around like 40 to 60 bucks all right but when you get into like san francisco minted like 35s 36s and they're mid-state condition i have paid as much as like 125 to 150 bucks for those examples. Now, these are clearly coins that are much better to see in person, but I tell you what, guys, these coins from the 30s, Buffalo Nickels, it's an obsolete, outgoing design, very popular. It's very trendy today amongst collectors. People are beginning to find and recognize that Min State 67 and up Buffalo Nickels of the 30s are beginning to dry up 
and are beginning to shoot up in price. So these, ladies and gentlemen, if you have the ability to find a dealer or whatever that just don't give a rat's you-know-what about their Mint State 1936P Buffalo Nickel, well, happy hunting. Because it, it, this is a, a virtual kind of like, uh, I, I guess, shooting fish in a barrel feeding frenzy of opportunity. Now this one right here, I mean, it's a 67, which is not the highest grade. For this date, it's a 36D. It's also CAC certified, and it's sold for $1,800. Like, come on, are you serious? I mean, coins... Nickel composition is one of the hardest, most durable compositions out there for coins. And a lot of them are going to be very well struck. There are some that have, like, lamination and, and, and properly annealed planchets. But guys, if you're looking to cherry pick and make a good... Good load of money. 1930s Buffalo Nickels across the board is another one that you guys should try out. Maybe try it this summer. See what you can find. All right. And I would say the same goes for any Philadelphia struck 19 teens and possibly 1920s. Um, these are still out there in raw condition. And they, they are also another opportunity for you to find some premier examples that haven't been slabbed yet. Find them, pay under a hundred bucks for them, and then go for it. You know, but make sure you have your magnifier. Make sure you're looking at these coins. You don't want to buy cleaned examples as well. All right, those are pretty easy to identify in the nickel coins. Uh, this one right here is sold for seventeen seventeen hundred three dollars and twenty five cents. Yeah, it's a mint state sixty seven, but trust me, um, th these are findable out there. They're not they're not rare. Now, once you get into like Denver and San Francisco struck. Teens, Buffalo Nickels, uh, that, that's that's really difficult to find raw. All right, so for the first time in like a long time, we actually have a Liberty V Nickel on the list. Now, this is a 1912D, for those of you that don't know. This is the very first date of nickel that features an actual physical mint mark. So this one has the D mint mark on the reverse under this first dot right here. Um, I... I used to be so infatuated with the Liberty uh, 1912 D's and S's. Now, of course, the, the, the S mint mark ones are quite a bit more expensive than this particular one. This would be kind of like your affordable, uh, you know, mint mark coin. Uh, but this one right here is Mint State 66. It's a beauty. This is a really nice coin. And it sold for $2,221.88. $2 $2 now, we do have some dimes, okay? And this is going to be lesson number three. Toned coins. It's a love it or hate it thing. You're going to come across people that absolutely hate toned coins. And that's okay. That's all good because, you know, you love toned coins, even though deep down inside you loathe them. But just think of the opportunities, okay? There is a hidden market. And it's actually quite a big market of people that will buy toned coins of any type. Now, generally, silver is better. Any Roosevelt dime, Mercury dime, Washington quarter, Standing Liberty quarter, any half dollar that's silver. If you find one with a lot of eye appeal, and look at this one. This one's not even that great. I mean, it's got good color on the obverse, but the reverse is, is relatively dark. Uh, although you could still make out like the yellows and the, the red magenta and pinks and all that stuff. Um, and... For a dime, it's not a full bands coin. So strike designation, again, is not applicable on this example. It is a mid-state 67 plus, in which a lot of that has to do with the toning. Uh, this one right here sold for $1,687.50. Again, you mean to tell me you're not going to cherry pick a toned coin? Uh, there's a lot of people that really do not like toning. Uh, because in a way, it is a form of corrosion, right? It's uh, it's tarnish. But you could just buy this coin, slab it, and then reap the rewards. I mean, this is a $5 coin, guys. Go ahead and make something happen. Okay, so this one's pretty cool. So there's a few kind of like, uh, you know, um, I guess varieties or key dates in lower condition that can be cherry-picked raw. All right, believe it or not, the 42 over 1 Mercury Dime. Okay, you can see like the 412 right here. That's funny. Uh, this is probably one of the most strongest overdates that you'll ever find in U.S. coinage. Uh, but this one right here is a PCGS AU58. 
Okay. Now you look at this coin, you're like, you know, you probably have this one available at a coin shop and you know, you don't know if it's cleaned or not. And you know, they're asking only like 500 bucks for it. I mean, why not take a flyer? If you had sent this coin out and it came back to details clean, you wouldn't have lost any money. As a matter of fact, you probably would have made a little bit of money. But let's say you bought this coin, which looks and appears marginal at best, because there are clean coins that come back, uh, come back okay uh, without the uh, details designation. And you know, you, you you roll the dice a little bit. But keep in mind, it's still going to be a coin that's worth a lot of money, even if it doesn't come back straight graded. Uh, this one right here in an AU58 sold for $1,867.50. So the coin essentially that you had paid $500 for, you paid another, uh, what, 50 bucks to, to grade it, send it off and shipping and all that stuff. And you would have made 1200 bucks. That's not bad. I would certainly take a flyer on that. Again, this is something that a lot of people do on a weekly basis. They scour eBay. They go to our coin shops and shows. And they also put out ads on the uh, like Facebook groups and stuff looking for collections. And then people just cherry pick, you know. I'm one of them. I do it with a lot lot of great success. Uh, but there are also a few people that I know personally that do it quite a lot more extensively than I do. And they are just wild. You know, they, that's how they make their living. And they make a pretty gosh darn good one at that. Now, nothing fancy here, just a registry set example, 1930 Mercury Dime, Mid-State 66 full bands, and uh, it's just a good-looking solid white coin, uh, no fancy underlying kind of like explanation for this one. Uh, also, a Sunset Collection piece, sold for $1,350. All right, so this is part of the other Mercury Dime that we talked about, the 42 over 1. Now, you'll look at this and you're like, oh, man, this thing is not going to grade out. But why wouldn't you at least try? 1916D is the key date of the Mercury Dime series. I mean, you'll look at it. If this thing wasn't graded, you'll think, oh, yeah, it's a little bit too light for my taste. Uh, it looks like it was probably cleaned and retoned. Uh, it does have this, like, strike through or, like, dent or whatever happened here on the reverse. Uh, so, you know, it's like, ah, you know, you're kind of on the fence of whether or not you want to try and grade this. But what if you didn't try? You, you have left a lot of opportunity on the table. This one is a PCGS VF30. And I know that's not the sexiest grade in the world to a lot of people, but we are talking one of the marquee key date coins in U.S. coin history. So why would you at least not try it? Even if it came back cleaned, it's still a coin that's worth a lot of money. So there's not a lot of risk associated with kind of like this grade level of 1916D. Uh, but if you did take the chance... You saw this coin, and you're like, oh, there's definitely just enough detail to, to, to make you think that it could be like a fine 15 or a VF30 or up to a VF30. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'll pay $800 for that. It seems like a lot of money, but believe me, that is like right in the market, even for a clean example of this type. This one sold for $4,641.75. Simply incredible. This is a great opportunity. There's tons of 16Ds that are ungraded even to this day. This is one of those coins that I would highly speculate and try and flip on above all else. You know, I would say another another good one would be the 1916 Walking Liberty Half Dollar, <laughs> right? A coin that is so exclusive, so, so low minted that most people would just shudder with having to touch one of those. But even if it was like marginal, whether or not it's been cleaned or something happened to it, it would be worthwhile to at least get it into a slab. You, you'd be surprised. You'd be make a little bit more money. Uh, just check the market for clean examples of like the 16D Mercury and that Walking Liberty half. You'll be surprised. Okay, so we have a few coins left. Now, this particular lot is actually the entire run of National Park quarters from 2010 all the way up to 2020. And they are all the 90% silver. Uh, coins with exception of 2020 those are triple nine fine but this is an entire run pcgs graded first strike proof 70 deep cameo they're all perfectly graded uh 55 coins total uh so this group right here sold for 1631 dollars and 25 cents 
Um, so here's the first couple years, uh, 2010, 2011, uh, starting with, you know, good old Mal Hood. I remember that coin released, you know, 11 years ago. Can't believe it's already done. Uh, here's the next few years. All right. So, uh, of course, we got a few of the more tougher uh, tougher ones in there, like Denali, El Yunki, Yunke, uh, Chaco Culture, Hawaii Volcanoes, and Acadia. 2012, that was a tough year for not only the business strike, but also some of the proof and silver proof strike coins. Uh, here's 1314 and 1516, or the start of 16. There's 17 as well. There's also 18 and 19, and they're all the same like slab or the, the label type. They, they haven't changed. And then, of course, we're rounding it out with the leftover 19s and then 20s. All right, but that's it. Yeah, that's the whole collection for $1,600. Um, you know, which it, if you were going to invest, why not pick up an entire Proof 70 run, all PCGS grade? I mean, it's not bad for the money. And then finally, another, I guess, lesson in all this, 1940s Washington quarters. Why aren't more people paying more attention to this particular decade of quarters is beyond me. But the cool thing about the Washington quarter series in general is there is no like extra bonus brownie points for strike designation. You know, there, there's no PCGS mid-state 67 plus Full tail feathers, okay? It, that doesn't exist, and, and thankfully, because the, this this series of coin has a lot of opportunity for a lot of people that want to, you know, buy coins on the cheap. Now we're talking like five, ten, twenty dollars for mint state nineteen forties quarters, and it doesn't matter if it's a PD or S. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal uh, op area of opportunity for someone that doesn't want to invest a lot of money into into like nice coins but also wants to grade them and see what they can do all right again i appeal is certainly very key uh to the graders okay they will assign extra brownie points for uh for coins that exhibit a little with exhibit a little bit of color of some sort this one has like light color it was probably an album coin as well uh, this one's also CAC certified, and uh, guess what? This one sold for two thousand eight hundred thirty-three dollars and eighty-eight cents for a coin that you could pick up for like twenty, thirty bucks, and with with fees to 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 get it all in line with PCGS, that is an incredible rip and flip, flip and rip, or whatever you want to call it. I mean, uh, yeah, I, the these coins in mid state are are plentiful and they are there for the taking so definitely give these uh give these a twirl a whirl yeah i can't even think because we are done with the report so yeah i've used up all of my brain cell energy to deliver this one today i know it's kind of like long and wordy and i do apologize about that but people have always been asking me blue without having to worry about full steps or full bell lines or full full you know Full bands, full split bands. What are some coins that I could get into and confidently invest a little bit of money into along with grading and not feel like, feel like I'm getting run over the coals, okay? I've talked about a good solid four or five of them to you where you're not going to let that happen. So anyways, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you have any success stories with these type of coins. There's a lot of them out there, not just the ones I talked about. But that's going to go ahead and do it. You guys have a wonderful Monday. Don't work so hard. Um, enjoy enjoy your hunting this week, whatever you decide to do. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Hit that bell for instant notifications. And as always, Coinaholics, we are discovering together. I will see you next time. And stay tuned for the Live Coin Q&A live stream, which happens Monday night, 5 Pacific, 8 Eastern. Be there or be square.